Everybody's talking at me I don't hear words they're saying Only the echoes of my mind Jesus Christ People stopping still Hi, it's Thomas. It's uh, rush hour at Penn Station, New York's busiest and least aesthetically appealing railway center. The trains I take pass through here and along with uh, the trains of half a million others every day, which is connected to New York and the rest of the Northeast by one little tunnel built in 1910 uh, in drastic need of repair. Just like the rest of America's infrastructure. Amtrak's North River Tunnel has two tracks, the only rail lines under the Hudson connecting New York City to the rest of the country. This bottleneck gets even worse at winter when ice forms in cracks left by Hurricane Sandy and 100 years of general wear and tear, forcing Amtrak to periodically shut down the tunnels and defrost their catenary electrical lines. We're actually looking around the wire. Usually there's icicles. Once we see it, we stop and we knock it down. This icicle here could trip out the catenary, could knock the wire down, a train could come in, then you have 600 people here stranded, then you got no power, and people are freezing on the train for hours. If we keep up with the ice, it won't happen. If we don't, it'll happen a lot. Oh, oh. Look, look at that, right there, that's a perfect spot. Oh, hey, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Careful, careful. You all right, everybody all right? That's what happens. What happens? That an outage, right? yeah. Call the PD right now. Hey, did you lose the south tube? No? Okay, we're almost done in here. A lot of ice. Ice scraping and other emergency maintenance keeps the North River Tunnel in service, at least for now. But it's a band-aid solution to the complete overhaul the tunnel needs to make it through its second century intact. This thing needs to be rebuilt, essentially, from the inside out. So the idea here is to build a new tunnel, shift all the traffic into the new tunnel so that we can then come back and rebuild these so that when all is said and done, you have four tracks under the Hudson. A four-track Hudson rail line is one of the goals of the Gateway program. While the new tunnel is still waiting for full funding, the old one puts as much as 20% of the entire country's GDP in jeopardy every time it has to be closed, which is frequently. Chaos and confusion at Penn Station last night. Transit problems at Penn Station again. The North River Tunnel needs federal money to help cover its estimated $13 billion price tag, a number that goes up by over $1 million every day they put off digging. Fortunately, the guy we elected president made a big deal out of allocating big money to big infrastructure projects just like this one. We need to pass a $1 trillion infrastructure plan to build new roads and bridges and airports and tunnels and highways and railways all across our great nation. Turning that vague promise into an actual plan was delegated to businessman and former member of the U.S.-China Congressional Commission, Dan Slane. Slane produced a list of 50 infrastructure projects for the Trump transition team to consider, prioritized by their urgency and national importance. My plan was to search out the most critical projects that we could start with, then define how many jobs would be created by those, what the economic development benefit was, so that I could go up to Congress, give them the estimates, and then the following year, go back and give them the actual numbers. That was the plan. Why did FEMA approach you for an infrastructure plan? Because I knew a lot about China. I studied what China did when their economy would start to dip. They switched over to infrastructure. They started building railroads, hospitals, power stations all over eastern China, billions of dollars that they poured into their country. And then when the economy picked up again, they stopped. And I saw the power of, of infrastructure. Our economy for the last 10 years has been stagnating. There's only two ways to grow your economy. You increase employment or you increase productivity. Infrastructure does both. Unlike China, however, the United States hasn't tapped into the full economy-saving power of infrastructure since the middle of the last century both in terms of building new stuff and keeping the old stuff in working order. And it shows. Now, we just inspected this bridge last year. There you can see the extent of the deterioration. See the hole? That's the call, the floor beam. That actually is a fracture critical member. Fracture critical means if one member fails, the bridge can fail. Okay. There's a hole on these you know, very much every floor beam all the way through here, so. The dates on these, that's just when they were noticed, or That's how, how we keep track of it. Every time when we come back the next time, we'll look at that writing and decide whether or not that hole has actually grown or not. 
And has this bridge undergone any like major renovations? This thing was built 1940 something. Everything that's done to this bridge from now on will be a band aid. So it's kind of like throwing money into a car that's yeah, not worth as exactly. much. Exactly. Yeah. Th throwing money into a 20 year old car. The National Bridge Inventory has a zero to nine scale, and this bridge is rated to four, which puts it in deficient category. We will close it when it gets lower than a three. If they were to lower the weight limit or close the bridge, where, where would be the nearest crossing? It's the only one within 100 miles or so either direction. How much time would that add to a trip? I'm guessing probably four hours to their time. Multiply those four hours by just the six trucks we've seen crossing the bridge in the 20 minutes we've been here, and you've already got one full 24-hour day worth of lost time and wasted gas. Then multiply that by the rest of the trucks on this route every day, and multiply that by the number of bridges in similar shapes statewide, and finally multiply all that by 50 states and 365 days a year, and you can see how the American trucking industry claims to lose some $60 billion annually just to lousy infrastructure. But a big old chunk of American shipping is still done by exactly that, shipping. Though its initial engineering was done by Mother Nature, the man-made infrastructure on our country's waterways is as old and dilapidated as its terrestrial counterparts. The Army Corps of Engineers operates a network of locks and dams that allow cargo boats, barges, and pleasure craft alike to navigate the country's rivers both upstream and downstream from one elevation to another. This is Locks and Dam 52 on the Ohio River. This is America's single busiest lock. And it's coming up on its 90th birthday. That's very old, and uh, things do break and closures do happen. When they do, it costs our economy some billion dollars every year. How much of this job is just kind of like waiting around on something to happen? I don't know. Some of it's waiting. It's the Army. It's hurry up and wait, but the river dictates this job. We arrived at Locks and Dam 52, smack in the middle of another closure, which by this point has become routine. A leak in the busiest lock and dam on the Ohio River. And once again, river traffic is at a halt at 52. Now, usually the water would be up to the top of the wickets when we get it all the way closed off. But last night, we're trying to raise the dam all the way to the pier. We got a hold of a wicket, and it came up sideways. When we let go of it, it washed over a couple other wickets and went down river, so we lost that one. So we're going to regroup. We don't know exactly what shape it's in until we dive on it and pull them out. It's a 1927 dam, so at any time we could have a catastrophic failure, which is going to cost more money. It's a budget nightmare, I'm sure. We're kind of falling apart, but... The whole point of the locks and dam system is to prevent the river water from becoming too shallow for a boat to pass through it. While many of the 100-year-old parts still work fine, like this vintage Jazz-era steam engine... Back in the 1920s, they were a genius when they built it. The parts that don't can cause some serious headaches, not just for the lock tenders, but for all the boats upriver. All those are those tow boats. Damn, how many is that? A lot. That wraps around for several miles. That's normal? Yes. Huh. And what's bad traffic like if it's normal? 150. Wait. I hope they've got some good books. Closures of 52 have lasted as long as 18 days, and the consequent boat jams aren't just irritating, they're also expensive. Even having one boat wait here for 15 hours has been estimated to cost its company $80,000. We just have a lot of traffic here. This is the busiest lock in the United States. It's busier than the Panama Canal. Everything's coming through here. This is America's economy. Lock 52 is supposed to be replaced with the state-of-the-art dam back in the 90s, but it's still under construction. And this is just one out of a whole network of locks and dams on one river. The Army Corps of Engineers estimates that it needs a minimum of $5 billion worth of repairs to keep the entire inland waterway system navigable over the next 20 years. And for corn farmers like Paul Jeske and the rest of our agricultural heartland slash breadbasket, there isn't really an alternative. These elevators are right in the best place you can possibly be to have the cheapest transportation for export. That is why we're so incredibly worried about the locks and dams going down. Who, who absorbs the cost of that? That either has to be paid for by us getting a lower price for our grain or paying more for the other inputs that we buy. The only source of that money, in my opinion, ultimately is the farmer. Even when the waterway's older infrastructure is working, the scale at which shipping technology and output have grown in the last hundred years has far outstripped some of its capabilities. We're about to pass through Lock 21 with a towboat pushing 150-foot barges. These young men all do is break off nine from the 15, push those through, and then the boat will push the other six through and rejoin until the next lock. Most of the United States' locks and dams aren't big enough for the larger barge tows to pass through altogether, so they have to be split up and reassembled at every lock along their route. So now the boat's in the lock, the deckhands are going to break apart the two sections of barge. It's kind of amazing how low-tech it is. The guy at the top of the line is called a mule, because that job used to be done by mules. No disrespect, but I just 
feel like they could give them a better title at this point. As slow going as the waterways can get, they're still far and away the most efficient and really the only sustainable way of shipping cargo at this scale. Uh, if this were all to be shipped by a train or trucks, how many would this take? With a 15 barge tow loaded at nine foot, that'd be 225 jumbo hopper cars on a train. 870 semi-trucks. So that'd be 11 and a half miles bumper to bumper to move what's in these barges. That's crazy. Once the barges make it through all the locks and dams to the bottom of the river, they still have one more piece of faulty infrastructure to contend with before their goods can be shipped abroad, the Port of South Louisiana, also on Dan Slant's infrastructural fix-it list. This is the major export port for the United States. Uh, when you think about 31 states, most of them are shipping grain and agriculture down here. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's also pretty nice of France to sell it to us for so cheap. Right. <laughs> What's going on down here? The major problem here is the silting at the mouth at a place called Southwest Pass. Mm -hmm. And the core doesn't have the resources to keep it open to a level of 50 feet draft. That's the new ships coming through the Panama Canal. So in 2016, they had to lower the draft to 41 feet. For every foot you lower, you lose a million dollars of cargo. When you multiply 7,000 ships a year, the number is astronomical making us less competitive in a global environment. The river becomes less viable to the ships that are being used. You're going to have less of that tax revenue because people are going to right. take their ships elsewhere, right. right? It's just a downward spiral. Slane was pumped to see the administration tackle this downward spiral until it became clear that his list of infrastructure priorities was not itself a priority. When did you realize that the administration was kind of not taking your February advice? of 2017. My list was shelved at that point. Mm -hmm. Their approach is to take most of the infrastructure, dump it back onto the states, and they know that the states don't have the funding, the states are not going to raise taxes, and it's a way to coerce the states into using public-private partnerships, having Wall Street finance infrastructure. The conflict is Wall Street wants the maximum return on investment. When you have an asset that is the public good, you want the minimum return on investment. So this is their plan, and it's going nowhere, and nothing will be built. Unfortunately, the Trump plan, as you have heard, is a sham. The president has said he wants to spend $200 billion. I'm not quite sure where those dollars are coming from. We're not going to be part of this budgetary flim-flam and pretend you can pay for roads and bridges just out of thin air. I could have started with infrastructure. I actually wanted to save the easy one for the one down the road. So we'll be having that done pretty quickly. Whether Trump intends to get to infrastructure quickly or down the road, or if these words are somehow supposed to mean the same thing, not having done it right out of the gate may have been a big oopsie. I tried to convince them to come out of the box on January 20th to do infrastructure. In my opinion, it's the single biggest mistake the president made. And I think if he had done that, he would have been invincible in November. We're gonna get this infrastructure going. $1.5 trillion investment in American infrastructure. We probably have to wait till after the election. 